In this video I'll cover how you can run notebooks in a data pipeline in Max Fabric and pass parameters to notebooks and also return information back to the data pipeline from the notebook. This and much more covered shortly. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Max Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we're continuing our journey with Max Fabric data engineering and today we're going to cover running notebooks as part of data pipelines and how you can pass information from a data pipeline to a notebook and from a notebook to a data pipeline. Let's fire up Fabric and check out how to do this in action. Here I have a blank notebook that I'm going to use in this demo. Then we also have a blank pipeline here that we're going to use as well. Let's start from our notebook. Let's add these two parameters to our notebook called param1 and param2. And to the param1 let's add this value abc and to the param2 let's add that value 0. So basically we're expecting to have string values to our param1 and integer values to our param2. And next we would need to navigate to this right hand side and here click toggle parameter cell. And here we could see that this cell has now chosen to be this kind of a parameter cell. A little bit later we can see how this works. And under this cell we can just add two print functions that basically are just printing our parameter values like this. So this first cell would be used to ingest some information that is coming from the pipeline to this notebook and to the last cell we want to add a function that will actually return data back to the pipeline after the notebook has executed. And I have a function for that and that can be achieved by using notebook utils and there the notebook functionalities and there is this exit function. And there we can specify the string value that will be returned from a notebook to a pipeline or whatever process is running this notebook as this kind of a return value from this notebook. And here we basically have all the code that we're going to need in this demo. So we are getting in some parameters, printing those parameters, and then we are returning an exit value after the notebook has completed. Next we can move into our pipeline. And to this pipeline we want to add a new activity and we want to add a notebook activity here. Let's name this notebook activity a bit better here that it describes that we are running that specific notebook. Then we have to also select that notebook from the list of available notebooks here and then we want to add two parameters since our notebook has these two parameters param1 and param2 and our param1 is going to be the string type and to the value we can just write for example pipeline value here and our param2 we want to specify to be integer and let's select that and then we can pass a value for example one two three there and now we have configured the parameters for our notebook. And now we are ready to run this notebook since we have configured the parameters and selected the notebook that we want to run. Let's run this and let's see what happens. Now our pipeline is running and it's going to take a little while to run this notebook. Now our pipeline has succeeded and we managed to run that notebook activity successfully there. And by clicking this activity name we can get this more information about the execution. And we can click this notebook snapshot link here that will actually open a new tab and here we can observe what happened during the notebook execution there. And in this view we can see that we had two input parameters for this notebook, param1 and param2, and there are the values. And we can put this down there and we can see that this was the original cell that we defined to be as this parameter cell. And when we were executing this notebook, Fabric actually generated this new cell under this parameter cell where it replaced these parameter variable values with these new values that were coming from the pipeline. And here is also a link that will explain something about this functionality. And now we can see since we replaced the values of these variables, we are printing values that came from the pipeline here. Then we also have this exit value that is saying this is a return value from the notebook. And we can actually see this return value in the pipeline by going to the pipeline and checking out this output that we have here. This is actually a little bit hard to read but we can see that there is this property called exit value and there is this return value that is coming from the notebook. And next I will show you how you can refer this exit value in the following activities and maybe do some logic based on this value. But before we do that I would like to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. Let's close this output and let's add 
set variable activity to this pipeline. Let's select the set variable activity and then we can add a new variable to this pipeline called nb exit value or notebook exit value. And let's have that as a string because that exit value is coming as a string from that notebook. And then we could use this set variable activity to here and use the dynamic content. And then we would set this variable value to be that exit value that is coming from the notebook. So basically the, the syntax would be the activity, the activity name, dot output, dot result, dot exit value, if you have specified that exit value in your notebook. And this should be able to fetch that exit value that is coming from the notebook. And now we can click OK and everything should be configured correctly. And now we can click run and see what happens. Now we have run our pipeline and we can see that everything went fine since all the activities succeeded. And now let's check out the output of our set variable activity. And here we can see that our nb exit value variable now has this value. This is a return value from the notebook. That is the same value that is coming from the notebook. And this is how you would refer these exit values that are coming from the notebook in the pipeline and how you could use the built logic around them. I hope you now have an idea how you can run notebooks as part of data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric and how you can pass parameters to notebook but also return some values from the notebook back to the pipeline. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.